video number two in our series on insulating and air sealing. This video is locating air leaks and using infrared. Hopefully you've already seen video number one on blower doors and getting ready to test. It was a great video and if you haven't seen it already, I would suggest going back and seeing that. And also big shout out to Matt Reisinger for letting us on the build show and take backstage footage and things like that. We really appreciate having this great of a canvas to work on for these videos. Now, whether you've seen the first video or not, I'm going to say it again. If you're not testing, you're guessing. Why would I as a homeowner, if you can't prove to me there's a problem, why would I pay you to fix it? Remember, people need proof that something's wrong. Their crime of comfort or indoor air quality requires building forensics, real evidence, so they can see it. The Department of Energy says that infrared pictures are using infrared pictures to show your point to a building owner, not just a homeowner, a building owner of all types, makes them five times more likely to act upon what you're showing them because they can actually see that it's a problem and that's going to cause them to want the work to be done. Not only that, but if you're the one that found the problem in the building, why would they trust someone else to fix it? So with that being said, let's jump into infrared. For this video, we're using the FLIR 1 Pro infrared camera. And I use that attached to my iPhone or my iPad. Certainly they make better cameras, which will get you better pictures. But this one works great for what I need, so it is what I use. The other thing I want to go over before we get into any of the footage is I really want a temperature difference between inside and outside. That temperature difference is what shows me where the air leakage is. I want that temperature difference, if I can, to be 20 degrees difference between the inside temperature and the outside temperature. I can work with 10 degrees. It just means I have to slow down a lot more and take a lot better pictures. Now, that is an important point though, I always want to slow down. The next thing I want to say on that is I also want to make sure that I don't get confused at what I'm looking at. So the blower door brings air from outside across the building materials, changes their temperatures and allows me to see where the leaks are. But if I see a lot of dark shading at the top of a wall, that's probably from the eaves overhanging and the sun not hitting that area. It may not be cold coming in. So we're going to look at different pictures and try and really focus on what we actually see. I also want to watch out for reflections from big windows or mirrors, things like that. I don't want to confuse what I'm looking at. Lastly, I would like to make sure that when you use an infrared camera that there is always a temperature point or two temperature points on the pictures you're taking. Pictures or infrared pictures without temperature markings on them are simply pretty pictures. That's all they are. This camera is designed to show a certain color palette. It'll do that in a three degree range. It'll do it in a 40 degree range. The pictures may look the same, but the temperature difference between the dark spot and the bright spot on that picture tell the story of how much energy is being lost in the picture you're looking at. So when you look at your images, be sure to think about the sun, where the sun was, and the different challenges you have. So let's get into the build show footage, take a look at what we did on site with Matt. Just remember, filming can be tough, you're in a hurry, you're doing a lot of things, so not everything we did on the job site was perfect. Just make sure versus what you see in the video, to slow down, get really good images, and make sure you get those temperature spots on them. Let's get into the show. Yeah. All right, Ken, so we're in the master bedroom here, and we've got the fan on 10 Pascals. I love this cool retro tech where we can see what's going on with the fan. And you've got a FLIR 1 Pro on your iPad so we can show some infrared. Now, how sensitive is that FLIR 1 Pro? Wait till you see how this thing works, man. We're gonna hold this up like this, and I just wanna to go to the wall, and I'm gonna put my hand on there, just for a and second. walk away. Oh my gosh. Look Take a look at that. You can see exactly your hand burn of the wall. 
It's so, that sensitive. So what we're going to do with this, I want to look at the outlets. I want to look at the base of the wall. Okay. I want to look at the windows. I know the windows are bad, but I really want to look at the heating, the air conditioning, yeah. where the ceiling fan comes down, and I want to check out the ceiling. Yeah. I'd really like to know how these walls are so doing. So let's tell these guys the construction here. We slab on grates, so no crawl space, no basement underneath us. This ceiling here is a attic uh, space above us. It's been insulated traditionally on the flat. These exterior walls are two by four walls. All right, with that being Perfect. said, show us what we got. Here. So let's take a look. Now, if we look down at the floor, well, there's not a lot coming in there. Oh, look at this. As we get to the outside, we're starting to see a little bit. We're seeing our studs. Not a lot. Look at that outlet. A little bit coming out of the outlet. Oh, look at that. That cavity right over there. There's some missing bats. Oh, my word. Look at this, Matt. <laughs> look at that ceiling. <laughs> Matt, I think you might have a little bit of a connection issue going here. Oh, my. God. So as we go around so this, hot. you know, we think of, this is an old 1970s metal window. Single pane. This is metal. as low as it gets. Down yeah, at the I'm bottom sorry. of that window where that molding is, look at what it's hiding. Yeah, something's under there. That is a vibrant connection to the outside right there. Yep. And look at that ceiling. It's looking like there's probably no insulation at all in that corner whatsoever. I'm guessing there is. You know what could be? There could be wind washing happening there because these trusses are running front to back. I bet there's no baffles up there. The wind is blowing any insulation that was there out of the way. And even the center of this ceiling, look at this. Look how hot that is right That here. should be just fine. But there yet. Be good fluffy insulation up there. Yeah. yeah. So as we get to the, oh man, look at your ceiling fan. <laughs> there, I bet there's a huge hole around where that box goes through the uh, drywall. And there's probably massive streams of hot air coming through there. I'd say that's an opportunity for air sealing all the way around for sure. Now, how would you do that air sealing from the top here? So the one thing I want to do, depending on what I've got for a fixture, yeah. you know, can lights can be a real problem when you have natural fiber insulation. Yeah. So if I'm dealing with a can light and something with a hot transformer, I want to cover that yeah. with a can light cover or yeah. one of the boxes, air seal that down to the drywall. Now look at that soffit area. Woo! Yikes. Matt and I had a great time with the infrared and using the blower door. We found a lot of air leaks. We also found some thermal bridging and you're going to see that. If you want to see more from this project, be sure and check out Insulation 2.0 on the Build Show on YouTube. Now, I also want to go over some of the pictures that have helped me a lot over time. As you go around the house with these pictures, you want to really find things that are going to show the homeowner what the problem is. Look at this attic hatch. Who wouldn't want that fixed? The next one I want to show you is this was the most uncomfortable room in the house. You're looking at a wall between an office and a workout room. There's no way from above you could fix this by just adding insulation. Insulation wasn't the problem. The next one I want to look at was a living room where the beam that goes across that living room was never sealed up. It's connected directly to the soffit. You can see the cold air coming up the ceiling and down through the can lights. This is obviously going to create a comfort problem. There are so many things that you can find and see. You find missing insulation. That's pretty motivating for a homeowner to try and get you to fix it. And that's the object. You're just finding problems that you can provide solutions to. Testing wins jobs, but you've got to be careful. You want to be careful to not catch reflections or especially hot windows. A hot window will reset the temperature gauge on your camera and make it where the temperature variances are so great you won't see anything on the wall. You don't want that to happen and you don't want those dominating your shots. Also, remember, don't take pretty pictures. Get that temperature on there. Be able to show the hot spot temperature and the cold spot temperature so you can really gauge what's going on with the wall. That's really the, the main things. People love numbers. They want to know what the difference is. We wouldn't wear Fitbits or be part of fantasy football or track different things if we weren't into numbers. So get them numbers, calculate everything, get great pictures, and then share it with it as you go around. Make sure that when you find something big, 
put your thumb on the screen and pull it down. Show them, remind them, this is really your house. You're not just looking at images generated by a camera. This is where the leaks are. It's a powerful, powerful tool. People want proof of what's broken. It's like my grandpa said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You want to show them what's broke and then, like I said before, provide those solutions so that they hire you to do it. So I want to thank you again for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you and your customers out somehow. Like and share this video with others. The more people that understand this, the more that are going to call your phone and ask for this type of service and evaluation to be done with their home so that they can actually gain comfort from what you're out there doing. Now, be sure to watch the next video on removing bad insulation. That's a great one. Watch all the videos in the series. But if you've got questions on this or any other products that we carry at IDI, reach out to any of us at the company. Our goal is to earn your business every day. We look forward to seeing you and removing bad insulation. Thanks so much.